Hello and welcome to video number 44. This video is on solving two-step equations and uh, we've already done some solving of one-step equations. This is not much more difficult really, it's another grade up. Um, it's just a combination of doing both of those things. Okay, so it's pretty much exactly the same until you uh, have to add or subtract and then multiply or divide, all right? Um, it might not be in that order, all right? But let's just look at a few examples and I will explain all, all right? So here's my working out space for question number one. I've got to solve these equations. A is 4x plus 5 and that equals 37. Okay, so I'm going to try and draw nice neat lines either side of the equal symbol to give me two sides to an equation. Um, and the first bit that I'm looking at there is this plus 5. I want to get rid of that bit, so I'm going to take away 5. Okay, the only way you can get rid of a plus 5 is to minus 5 from it. That would make it equal to nothing. So that bit's going from there, but because I've taken away 5 from this side, I need to take away 5 from this side. So I'm going to do that too. All right, now 4x is the only thing that will be left on this side, so I'm going to write that down here. And then the only thing that's left on this side is 37 minus 5, which is 32. All right. Uh, the only thing that is left remaining to do is the second step of this. And we're going to divide by the number that is in front of the letter. All right. Because 4x means 4 multiplied by x. We're going to divide because that's the inverse operation. All right. And then we're going to pop that on both sides because that's the golden rule. We've got to do the same thing to both sides. x equals 32 divided by 4 which is 8, okay? So x is equal to 8 in that first question. I'm going to get rid of this working. In a matter of seconds, it has disappeared, and you will get to see the magic that goes on in question B. 3y minus 11 equals 19. Two sides to an equation. All right, a left side and a right side. Now I want to get rid of that minus 11. And to get rid of a minus 11, I have to add 11. It's much the same as the last question. Thinking of the inverse operation, add 11 to both sides, to the number bits. Right, so 3y is the only thing that's left on that side. And 19 plus 11 is 30. Divide both sides by the number that's in front of the letter, just like we did last time. This time it's a 3. Y equals 10. 30 divided by 3 is 10. So y equals 10. Again, whiz through with the eraser and get rid of the ink on the page. And then, and obviously you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. You'd keep that working out there, especially in class. So I can see what you're doing. All right. Um, and then you've got this one, last one, slightly more awkward numbers. So 3z plus 17 is equal to 24. All right, so I'm just going to show you what you're allowed to do here if you've got awkward numbers. Again, same thing. Let's take away 17 from both sides. And if you take away 17 from 24, you end up with 7. And you've got 3z left on this side. Okay, so you've got 3z. That's not a 2. That is a z. So 3z equals 7. Uh, and divide by 3. And you divide by 3. Now, I'm not sure what 7 divided by 3 is, and I can't be bothered to work it out. So all I'm going to do is go 7. Uh, that's not a 7. I'm going to go z equals 7 over 3. All right, I could write that as a mixed number if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it as that because I'm being lazy and it's okay to do that. It's all right. Just go with it. Okay, 7 divided by 3. It's a nice way of answering that question, isn't it? Makes things a bit easier. We don't have to think so much. It's always nice when you don't have to think in maths because most of the time you do have to think. Right, now question 2. Solve the following equations. This is um, still two steps, but uh, first of all, we're going to get rid of the number that's on the bottom here by uh, multiplying by 3. So I'm going to write out the equation 5x over 3 is equal to 15. To get rid of a divided by 3, we multiply by 3. So we've got two sides to the equation, a bit wobbly. All right, you multiply by 3, and that's how you get rid of the divided by 3 bit. So the only thing you've got left there is 5x. Okay, now... If we multiply 15 by 3, we get 45. And then all that remains is the same as what we did in the last question. Divide by 5 and divide by 5. Okay, so x will equal 9 because I know my times tables. 45 divides by 5 to give me 9. x equals 9 in that question, which is lovely. All right. Looks trickier. But actually, still two steps. That's why I put it in the two-step equations video. Right. This one is, uh, again, much the same thing. I'm just going to show you a second example. So you've got 10x 
over 2, which equals 8. Get rid of the divided by 2 by multiplying by 2 both sides and you end up with 10x left on this side is equal to 16 uh, but this time we could write our answer if we divide by 10 we divide by 10 the thing that probably stands out most easily to people would be to write it as a decimal this time so 16 divided by 10 move decimal place back one space 1 1.6 oops what's going on with my mouse there we go 1.6 would be the answer x equals 1.6 um, there you go, and there's that one. Right, the mouse is freezing at the moment. I think it's breaking because I'm doing too many videos. Um, it would be nice if it started working again. Hold on. Let me, I can't even pause the video. Can I pause it? No, I can't. Let me plug this one in. Talk amongst yourself. There we go. Right, I think my, uh, my pen might have bust itself. Let's move myself over here. I'm in there. I'm not going to start the video again. Please forgive that little interlude. Um, this is the last question. So solving this equation here, let's put the lines down either side of the equal symbol. It's going to be even harder to, to do now because I'm using this horrible mouse. So we've got 56 equals 24 minus 14x. Let's take away that 24 from both sides. So minus the 24. Ugh, no, that's horrible. I'm not even going to write that. Just take away 24 from both sides. If you take away 24 from 56, uh, what you're left with? Uh, you are left with 32. Okay. And then you are equaling that to minus 14x. Ugh, I'm so bad at doing that with this. All right, but that says minus 14x there. Now, this one, I've got a negative number in front of the x. It's no different. You're still just going to divide by it. So minus... Uh, sorry, divided by minus 14. Okay, and that's what we're going to do to both sides. So I imagine I've written that there as well. 32 divided by minus 14 is 32 over minus 14. Okay, now that could be our answer, but we can tidy that up a little bit. That would be equal to x because that's what's left on this side. All we did was divide by the number that was in front of the x. Uh, 32 over 14 um, can be written as uh, 16 over 7. Can't simplify that any further. So our answer actually would be x equals negative or minus 16 over 7. Okay, bring that negative symbol out in front of the whole fraction. So what I would do if one of those numbers is negative. All right, if they're both negative, then it will become positive. But it isn't, it's only one that's negative. So it is a negative fraction. All right, now that's an awkward answer, but we've simplified it as best we can. All right, and that's a very awkward way of writing things. I'm going to try and get my pen to work for the next video. Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to buy a new one, and that will take a couple of days. So the videos will take a little bit longer to go up. But hopefully you've enjoyed that one. Uh, the best you can enjoy an algebra stuff video um, online on YouTube. Um, please do like if you did watch it and you thought, actually, I've learned something from that. That was all right. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're watching the rest of the videos, uh, especially use it for revision. If you're, near, if you're in year 11, this is perfect. Um, watch the videos. The, the playlists will probably be between four, five, maybe six hours for each particular unit. However, you won't need to watch all the videos. You just need to whiz over them and then use the resources and you should be able to get a pretty decent grade at the end of it. All right, I'm going to show you how to do everything properly. So uh, there you go. Enjoy. Have a lovely rest of your day.